guys, what is up? John here from fly8mikealpha.com. Today we are talking about cornering, exactly what is a safe speed to turn off the runway at. All right, so to test this out, well, we're first gonna go ahead and make a normal exit from the runway at about five miles per hour. Then we'll make a normal exit at 10 miles per hour. 15, we'll just keep increasing that speed until we really kind of lose control of the aircraft and can't quite keep it going straight. And we'll do our very best to avoid all those runway lights and taxiway lights. And so we're gonna go ahead and do this by just following that lead off line. That's gonna be our goal, right? We're gonna try to follow that lead off line and see exactly what is the safe speed to do it at. So we've got our GPS speedometer here and we'll be trying to use minimal braking, just brakes as much as we need to maintain directional control. We'll actually do this at 10 miles an hour to start with because five is well, a good safe speed, and that's the speed I would normally recommend, but it's a little bit too slow for this test here. So, here is 10 miles per hour. Oh, maybe just a little bit more than 10. We'll use a little brake to try to slow her down there. A little bit fast, a little bit on the fast side, but we are able to do it safely. Let's go ahead and hang this guy around. Try that one more time, now at 15 miles per hour. All right, there's 15 miles per hour. Try to follow it off here. And well, that's a lot more difficult to do. Just over 15 there. Wow. But with a little bit of brake, we were able to do it, but definitely not safe. Our next test here is going to be at 20 miles per hour, and I'm guessing this is going to get pretty exciting. And trying to follow this yellow line here. And, well, not quite able to do it, but just barely. Definitely the airplane's tilting. You can feel those struts collapsing. Really not where you want to be here. And the next one we'll go ahead and try at 25 miles per hour. This is going to be, well, nothing more than a skid, I'm sure. Any sort of wet pavement here would definitely result in a loss of control. And I don't know why we're even trying this. Yeah, so that's exactly, that's exactly how guys wind up taking out taxiway lights and runway lights and having propeller damage when they're trying to exit the runway. Moral of the story here, aside from everything we're about to tell you back in the studio, is never, ever accept to turn off a runway or try to turn off the runway unless you're sure you can get the airplane to a nice safe speed going straight before you start to make that turn. Don't start to wander off center line getting closer because what you're doing is you're just going to cause yourself to have to make a sharper turn later on. The airplane may not be able to do it. 20 miles per hour is really not a lot when you just came in and landed at 60 or 70. You may have that sensation of you're not really going all that fast and really bite you in the butt here guys. Five miles per hour, nice safe turn off speed. Anything else? It's really exciting and really off a ways really fast. All right guys, so maximum cornering speed. This one should be pretty straightforward, right? Whatever the POH says or five miles an hour, that is the safe, that is your maximum cornering speed to follow those yellow lead off lines off the runway. Don't try to make it up on your own. Don't try to be coming off center line early to make that turn. Don't try to make the turn wider thinking you can take it faster. The difference between 15 or 20 miles an hour and going five miles an hour isn't a whole lot. You're not saving yourself any time. And if you think that you know, you're being rushed a little bit by the guy behind you on final, that's really the reason we made this video is because we see all the time guys on final at a non-towered airport yelling at somebody trying to get them off the runway quicker. I'm gonna have to go around. God, why can't you get out of the way? 417 Alpha Sierra, turning final 3 4 Darlington. Aircraft, you better be rolling. Oh, my. Yeah, take it easy there, bud. We're going to turn off here at L2. And my fourth go around, bud. That says more about you than it does me. All right, let's see if we can clear Show final four. 3 4 Darlington. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And Arlington traffic, Cessna 62 Delta is clearing runway 34 at Alpha 2. Or, or at a towered airport, a controller saying, left turn immediately at Bravo, get off the runway, you got traffic short final behind you. see guys get rushed, get pressured, or just be in a rush on their own, make a poor decision, and they skid, they slide, they break a nose gear, they mow down some lights, they hit a sign. It's not a good day. It doesn't help anybody. It doesn't save anybody any time at all. and costs a lot of embarrassment, money, and a lot of issues for yourself. 
you're the pilot in command, all right? There's only one on board, you're it. Act like it, make decisions like it. Don't let anybody else fly that airplane for you. And if somebody is trying to fly the airplane for you, well, simply stay calm, relax, probably just ignore them. And then you can handle it once you're back down on the ground and everything's shut down, you can talk to them about it later. All too often we see this happen, even with CFIs on board who think, oh, I'm gonna help out the tower, I'm gonna help out the guy behind me. We're just gonna start wandering off center line and make this turn a little tighter. Or I'm gonna apply brakes all the way through and apply brakes through this turn to try to get off the runway quick. It's not helping out anybody. When you're turning the airplane, get nice and slow. When you're stopping the airplane, stop straight ahead and then start a nice turn once you're at a safe speed to do so. Don't be in a rush. That's the reason why we made this video. Not just because we're trying to really destroy this airplane, which, well, we kind of are, but also because we want to show you guys that it doesn't take much. And we found right around 25 miles per hour is where this thing broke free and we totally lost control of it. And we were heading for the grass and gonna mow down some lights. And had I not been expecting it to happen where I was deliberately doing this, well, then at that speed, I probably would have lost control and probably would have wound up in the grass, mowing down some lights, possibly snapping a nose gear and a lot of not fun things, right? So that was on good dry pavement with pretty good tires and, and really expecting what was gonna happen. Anything else, worse tires, loose pavement, wet pavement, any other conditions, a little bit of wind involved, would have been not as good, right? Would have been a lot less controllable at that speed and possibly would have had the same outcome at 20 or 15 as we did at 25 miles per hour. Five miles per hour is a speed that I always talk to students about. A nice, fast walk or a very, very slow jog, five miles per hour, good, safe taxi speed. At that speed, if something goes wrong, your brakes fail, whatever it is, you can pretty much just pull your mixture, turn off your mags, and let the airplane coast to a stop safely, or possibly turn it off in the grass between the lights, very much under control. Do not be taxing fast. What scares me the most as a flight instructor is being on the ground. I am most alert and most concerned when I'm on the ground with students, either taxing out to go take off, or during takeoff and landing operations, or taxing back in. Those taxi operations, whenever we're on the ground, I'm way more nervous than I am when we're up at 3,000 feet doing stalls and spins and all that other stuff that you think might be more dangerous. The ground is not a time where you're probably gonna die. I mean, who really dies from skidding an airplane at 20 miles an hour, right? But it's a time where it's very easy to mess up and we're trying to not mess up. We're trying not to embarrass ourselves, not cost ourselves a lot of money, not cost ourselves a lot of paperwork. Now, it's important to also mention when this happens at towered airports or non-towered airports, no one is behind you in the air at a non-towered airport going, hey, could you please try to make that next exit? I don't wanna go around here. And the tower controller's not saying, oh, uh, you know, one, two, three, four, five, remember one, two, three, four, five, would you mind turning right at Delta there? I got traffic short final if you could. No, what they say is, right turn Amelia Delta. You know, what the guy behind you says at the non-tired airport is, get off the right, come on, I'm on short final, really, move your airplane, hurry it up. And it forces you to get a little stressed, to rush a little bit. No one's asking politely for you to think calmly about, okay, no, I can't make that turn, that's not safe, I'm just gonna continue straight ahead. No, it's when people are putting you under pressure and you're allowing them to put you under pressure that you make a choice like that to accept a turn you can't or to try to make a turn because somebody's behind you at a non-towered airport and you're trying to help them out. You're not helping them out any if you snap off your nose gear and now they gotta go around anyways because your airplane's blocking the runway and they can't land there. So take your time, stay calm. Don't let anybody else fly the airplane for you. Think, and if there's ever any sort of issue where you feel pressured by other people, take it up with them after the flight, not during it on the radio. That's it for this video. That is all part of our What's Inside of an Airplane slash Let's Destroy an Airplane video series here on YouTube and a lot, lot more videos like these on flyatmikealpha.com that are not here on YouTube. So definitely check that out. The link is in the description below. If you have any questions on this, you can always leave your questions in the comments below here or go on flyatmikealpha.com, click on that ask a question button at the top of the page there. As always guys, if you cannot fly every day, flyatmikealpha.com, go on there, Check out all the different courses. We have private pilot, instrument pilot, commercial pilot courses, CFI courses, tailwheel, seaplane, all sorts of different stuff on there. Lots of free courses as well. And we'll see you guys in the next video.